The argument from reason is just the argument that, re that in a naturalistic worldview, you can't, that reason isn't going to fit. Uh, what Lewis noticed about reasoning is that when you draw a conclusion, when you reason logically, your conclusion has to be determined by your insight. You have to see that a certain conclusion follows. But that seeing and that aiming to prove a conclusion are a real problem for materialism. Because materialism posits a world that's blind. It doesn't see things. Its consequences are inevitable. If you start with unintelligent things that lack mental states. You can add them up all day long, but you're not going to come to anything that, that involves what I would call, what I call rational inference. Every argument involves logical realities, such as entailment, you know, if A then B, A therefore B. This is this, this form called modus ponens, and when you hear that, you know, you can't demonstrate that empirically. It's not like I could sort of go out and get experiential evidence that, you know, from physics or something to show that modus ponens is valid. But at a certain stage, when we think about that, we simply understand that it has to be true, and it has to be true in any possible world. If A, then B, A, therefore B. Lewis points out that um, when we infer that something logically follows, we see that it's necessarily the case. And he points out that that insight would always be unjustified if it's simply based on past experience of the individual uh, or the species. And so Lewis says, okay, well, let's just sort of assume that that's true for a minute, so that everything we've got about us, all of our human capacities, they, if we have them, they ultimately had to have been preserved by natural selection and given our ancestors a survival advantage. Well, it's not clear that natural selection would ever give rise to reasoning capacities that allow us to peer through to truth. Um, in other words, what natural selection does is it can select for behavior. A, a completely naturalistic view of the world is going to explain reasoning away. That in order, for, in order for reasoning to be what it has to be, in order for science to be what it is, you can't, the materialist worldview is actually not going to be able to house that. There's an irony in this, that um, if, if naturalism is not compatible with reason, that's an interesting philosophical point, but it's also an uh, important criticism of naturalism because naturalists usually claim that they come to the conclusions of their philosophical views based on reason. Naturalists, perhaps more than anyone, claim that their ideology is founded on sweet reason and sort of following the evidence where it leads. And yet, if Lewis is right, naturalism doesn't follow from reason, it's actually incompatible with reason. And that's a remarkable result of a, an argument that he manages to make in about six or seven pages in this small book, Miracles. If a naturalistic worldview is true, I, th I think one of the conclusions that you would have to draw would be no one believes anything for a reason. Naturalism, intellectually, I think, doesn't have a lot of substance. In fact, I think it, it collapses in upon itself. But that doesn't mean it doesn't have cultural power. And so what we've got to do is we've got to make Lewis's argument quite clearly and compellingly to the current generation, many of whom uh, are, are simply buffaloed and fooled by the, the claims of naturalism because the pretense is that they're based on very careful philosophical reasoning. Lewis considers the implications for how we treat human beings. Uh, what will we do? And he considers first the kind of the inconsistent approach, which is to debunk ethics. C.S. Lewis's argument from reason is so important today because if anything, the naturalistic worldview is more prevalent now. I mean, Lewis, when he's dealing with these things in the 1940s and 1950s, naturalism was quite common, but I think now it truly occupies the commanding heights of culture.